Yeah. I, no one can tell me what I can and can't say. Yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. Can, what, what, yeah. And that's the way to be. Well, that's why I sort of like as well when I was um, when I was thinking about like what how how, how to get further in, in comedy, for example. And, I, and like, it sounds funny, right? But yeah, I'm taking this way too deep so quickly, so quickly. But um, <laughs> if you, if you, if you, a lot of us don't think about death, right? No, no, but like. <laughs> like no, not really, not every no, day. No, but you don't think about death, right? But um, I saw a few young people dying. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, and you so you see you see people like Nipsey Hussle and Cadet that passed away, right? And yeah. you were like, oh my god! But they've got such a body of work that people went back to and stuff. And I was like, if I was to die tomorrow, what would people really know about my talent? <laughs> no, but yeah. it, it's true. Like, what would people know? And I can't just sit around waiting around for uh, Netflix or Amazon or whoever it is to, to come and knock you. on my door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was like, do you know what? Like, if you want people to discover you, if you want people to find you. You're better off just filming it yourself and putting it out Getting there. Get it out there, bruv. And do you know what? See, my I've always got I've got a soft spot for comedians. Okay. One because I, I think comedy is the hardest art form on the planet. Yeah. Because people are militant with it. Like, uh, you, yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah, gonna make yeah. me laugh, funny boy. Go on then. Some people they almost have, especially at comedy yeah, shows when you're yeah, starting yeah, out yeah, there, yeah, their backs yeah, up. But yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna yeah, let yeah, you make yeah, me laugh. Yeah, Plus, yeah, yeah. my dad's a comedian, so he done it his whole life. It's his okay, career. It's what he's done. Old school though, kind of your Mike Reed, kind of um, Frank Butcher, the okay, dude, that, yeah, that okay, kind of old okay. school comedy. But you know, he'd done it his whole life, and you know, 80s and 90s was doing his big thing. And so I've always got this soft spot for comedians in that regard. But my dad, 10 years ago, I'm like, Dad, you gotta start putting your stuff out there on the internet. He's like, I've done, I've had my career. I said, But Dad, trust me, like, put it out there. And he's old school, nah, people are gonna nick this, they'll steal this idea. And I'm like, that's fine, but then you'll see other people's. You've got to and adapt it. Like yeah, you've got yeah, to start yeah. doing it because he's got some really good stuff. It's it's blue comedy, but people love that shit. Maybe the, yeah, the BBC yeah, yeah. don't like it anymore. No, no, no. But, but I mean, the world does. Yeah, but I mean, if, nowadays, like the 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 era of appealing to just um, what channels one, two, three, and four and five has gone. Like back in the day, that's why like the people that were good were so good because they had to appeal to. All of that, but now you you can get your own little niche audience. Yeah. Stuart Lee uh, said something like, "You only need about ten thousand fans." Yeah, it's true. You only need about ten thousand fans. If if each of them gave you a tenner over a year, you're, you're doing well. You're doing good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. So, so it's 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 a it's a better mentality to have when you sort of put it into those terms. That's why, I like, even when I look at YouTube views and stuff, for example, like, I've got. As we're speaking, I've got over 20k on my special, right? And a lot of people might go, "It's not that much in in YouTube terms, or whatever." But I'm like, my channel had 400 subscribers yeah. before I put it up. Do you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. And you and when you think of each view as like a person, you're like, that's that's an arena. Exactly. That, do you know what I mean? That's, exactly. that's the arena, or like that's that's <laughs> that's a festival. And especially if the engagement's good, the, what I, the number of views yeah. my channel gets is great. But I look at like the average view duration yeah, of a viewer, yeah. and so when you do, do your research on YouTube, anything above six minutes is good. It's very good. Yeah. And like my channel's currently like nine and a half minutes per video, so I get called a clickbaiter a lot. And I never let it bother me. That's just haters because I know that the average it's viewer YouTube, watches though. not yeah it's, it's the internet it's what it's what it's about it's like, like no one called newspapers clickbaiters for all the years with their yeah, headlines yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what exactly, i mean exactly but it's, it's it's how you do it do you know what yeah, i mean yeah. like theoretically a, a comedian everything you say is clickbait because it's all a joke <laughs> it's not well no i mean i don't i wouldn't say it's necessarily clickbait but it, it's like you're you're evoking emotion in people yeah a lot of the time so you it, it depends what kind of comedian you are as well if you're somebody that People like Chappelle and, and Bill Burr, they, they say things that are sort of, especially like Bill, yeah. he'll he'll say things that, you, like he'll, there'll be a there'll be a point of view that he holds that you're like I don't agree with that, but he'll ram down the point in such a hilarious way that it'll make you laugh along with it even yeah. if you don't agree with what he's saying, which is which is a massive skill. Yeah, of course it is, and I, I think that's the the thing with my dad always used to say to me that if something is truly offensive, it can't be funny. But if it's funny, it, 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 a joke, if it's funny, it's not offensive because it's, it's coming from a place of, you, you're looking for, at it from the humorous side and you think about, you know, a white comedian can't tell racist jokes anymore. But people in the public still like racist jokes as long as they're now told by what society deems to be the right people. If, if you get where I'm coming from, like, and, and that's my fear for comedy 
is when that when that line gets drawn further back in terms of I don't know they, they film a it'll, it'll be a celebrity first of all who's filmed laughing at Dave Chappelle telling a black joke as it were and it's okay. like well, you shouldn't even laugh at that why do you even find that funny like do you ever worry about like that level of comedy that area because comedy gets attacked a lot at the minute in, yeah. the, in the press do you I, think it'll ever go that far where you can't even laugh at a joke about something that's offensive I mean it, I think things are becoming fragmented even more so so there's there's comedians like Anthony Jeselnik that probably won't get that level of attention for his jokes mm. Uh, even though a lot of his material would be quote unquote offensive to a lot of people, but that's just his style. Um, and I think people like Dave Chappelle are in, in, in a position like that where they're scrutinized so much because they're seen as the one of the greats of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna draw a lot more attention from a lot more people. But I think by and large, the majority of people now will only stick to their sort of camp. So if you like this kind of humour, you'll be drawn towards that comedian. It's yeah. I think the era of like like there's there's a, there's so many specials on Netflix. Yeah. There's 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 tons and there's probably thousands of them, right? I'm, I'm if yeah. I'm not exaggerating. But you haven't watched them all, but that's because there's so there's so many varying tastes and genres now. Yeah of course. So I feel like um as long as people are just sticking to their... I don't think there will be that level of offence. I mean, in comedy clubs, you it's the best sort of litmus test for like what you can and can't say. Yeah. So it's very rare that somebody can be in a comedy club, uh, and I don't think I've ever seen it happen, actually, to, that can say something racist and get a laugh out of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or, or something like outwardly sexist and, and get a laugh out of it, because... Or homophobic or any of that sort yeah, of stuff, yeah, yeah. because... Audiences aren't stupid, and audiences' mind mindsets have have grown as well. Um, but yeah, if you're saying something genuinely offensive, the crowds and the audiences are the best sort of litmus test for it. You oh, could be yeah. there, and, and they'll say, but I, I don't think it will get to a level where people can't. I think when people say, ah, oh, you can't joke about anything these days anymore. I think, I think it's. I think that's a lie. I just think you've got to be a bit more skillful with how you tell stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I understand. As I say, though, I think that, that I think you're right. Like my dad doesn't tell, yeah. never has told what you would sort of call like outright, openly racist jokes. He's had to change his material over 30, 40 years because things change. Education changes. You understand? Okay, that yeah. isn't acceptable, and this is this is not. Yeah. But the one thing that struck me years back, we were at a show doing a show in uh, Tottenham predominantly Afro-Caribbean audience and my dad's 15 minutes in and my dad didn't know what to do because they're all shouting they're, they're heckling him they're basically saying tell us some racist jokes mate and they're like, he's like what? he goes tell us racist jokes and he's like what do you mean? he goes we're black rip into us about it and, and my dad's sort of like but I've been told for 20 years that this is wrong and now I'm in front of a crowd so I think that there is an element of people that well, like well I mean when they say when they say racist I mean I don't think they mean rip into us in the no, sense of yeah. like Ah, oh, N word this or that. No, that, of that, course, that. of course. It, I mean, I think, I think with when when so, I think a lot of a lot of audiences don't understand think that comics just cuss people. Yeah. Which isn't <laughs> which isn't the case. Well, it's, it's because that's because of sort of like you see the rise of like uh, crowd work videos and people are just taking a Mickey out of. You see comics just taking yeah. a Mickey out of people in the crowd. So I think with with things like that, there's probably certain elements of it where it's like, oh, just rip into us for. For, I don't think necessarily racially, but do you know what yeah, I mean? and it was yeah. more what they kind of, you know, my dad, my dad did indulge with them, but it was it was stupid jokes they wanted. Does that make sense? Like it, it was nothing, and it was 10, 15 minutes. Well, but and I mean, laughed, it and, depends what crowds you're going for. And it was because a, I've been yeah. in front of certain crowds where, like black crowds, if you say, said anything like that, you'd be, <laughs> you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd get, you'd get absolutely. Uh, but this was also a private crowd, so yeah. it was a private club in terms of everyone there knew each other it was, sure. it, it was that. So, so it's one of those things but I think from my dad's point of view he was like taken aback my dad's like the most left wing person I know like he you know, this is how left wing he is he's got five boys that love football he's a Spurs fan and he never made any of us support Spurs he let us pick our own teams like he's and he's like that with every yeah, walk wow. of life like if I come home tomorrow well I went to his house tomorrow and said oh, dad I'm changing religion I'm, I'm becoming I'm Jewish or Muslim. He'd just say, "You happy?" I'd say, "Yeah, he go go for it." Like he just, he, you know, there wouldn't be. But when you look at my dad, you know, he's six foot six, 
skinhead looks like a fat Phil Mitchell. What's his name? Uh, Jeff Dukes is his name. Okay. Yeah, he's, so, but it's, when you look at him, you would think, oh, he looks like an EDL voter. He, and he oh, does. Okay, he's okay. got that appearance. But when it comes down to the, in a cold light of day, yeah, he's, he's very open and minded. Like that. So he was very taken aback by that. But yeah, from my point, like, comedy is such a difficult art and it's so difficult to get right. And of course, there's been all the, as you say, the, the hullabaloo, especially in the States around Dave Chappelle's recent, recent special, yeah. special, which for me, I just thought it was on point. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And that's because that's I like Dave Chappelle, though. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, it, I also like that harsh comedy, you know, where you know, someone like Frankie Boyle, I wouldn't necessarily, like, some of the things he says, I almost, it's so outrageous, I find it, you know, cringe funny, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's a lot of shock value to it. That's what I'm saying. Mm. If you probably like Anthony Jeselnik, though, if you like that kind of stuff. I've never watched yeah. his stuff. So you probably like that. You're going to have to do a free point. Yeah, yeah. And this road is closed. Um, there's, yeah, I mean, listen, man, everybody's got their own taste, especially with people like Dave Chappelle, man. I think it sells articles, sells stories to say um, you don't like him and whatnot. It's, it's, yeah. it's one of those ones. But, but also, I mean, some people may have legitimate concerns about the material, but I don't think in any um, in any sort of I don't think he's m- meant to be malicious and I don't think he's a bigoted person at all um, no. I think I think there is an element though of people in society now um, wanting to act like a victim with everything <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah and yeah, I've yeah, said yeah, that yeah. before on my own podcast and I just feel like you know as soon as you start seeing X Factor sub stories and this sort of stuff like rather than the talent taking over it was the story and, and how much of a victim this person was and yeah. how hard they've had it um, whereas I've never sort of been one to dwell on that sort of stuff I'm just like alright cool get on with it and you it. could bruv like, you, yeah. you, you know your, your background yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And obviously I've watched, I have watched your, your special and I know yeah, that yeah. there's jokes in there but I, it, it seems very connected to the, the, the truth in relation to you know, you know, refugee in the UK. That's right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Originally. So yeah, when we originally yeah, came, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you you could play that that card, and it would you would get credence with a certain audience. But yeah. I don't know whether that audience. You know, you spoke earlier about that ten thousand. You want like that solid yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it would play with them no, because no. the general public don't really. Well, that's it. Like that's that when anymore. I say when I say I say this all the time, man. You could you could do, you could become critically acclaimed doing that sort of stuff, and there'll be like certain publications that will champion you for being brave and. Being very, very eye-opening and blah 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 blah. <laughs> but I mean, if you predominantly, I think people put on a comedy special because they want to forget about their own problems. They want to forget about it's, it's a form of ex- escapism. So yep. even if they are seeing there's certain things that you're talking about in society that's going on now, if you can give it um, a, a funny twist to it, people people give it a sigh of relief and go, oh, of course, it's not all that bad. But I think the last thing people want on a Friday night when they're coming out to laugh is you lecturing them about how they should and shouldn't think or whatever and and sort of because you know telling people how to think well well, that's where I think it's gone wrong with someone like myself who I would say the majority of my life I would put myself left of centre in politics Mm -hmm. I voted remain when it comes to Brexit okay if I was American I definitely wouldn't have voted Trump Trump or, or or Republican before that, if that makes okay. sense. It's, it's not even a Trump thing. It's it's, but the last three or four years, the left as you'd call them, because it's this continual. You have to think this way. You shouldn't think that way. It's a lot of identity politics. Yeah, yeah, I think that's which, that's, which, I, yeah, which yeah. I hate because I yeah. grew up in the East End of London. Like, I I went to school with refugees. I went uh, I went to school with people that were born here. People that were third, second, first, third generation oh, immigrants. Yeah, yeah. like a, a, a big mixture of people. And and I, I never until I was in my mid twenties. Race was never a conversation. No, me and my friends just got on. There was no issues. I I'm a, I'm a Kurdish boy joined our, our school, and I think in like year six, boy didn't speak a word of English when he came to the school. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't ostracised. He yeah, joined yeah. in. I mean, it was hard playing football because he, course, he couldn't yeah. say anything, yeah, but yeah. he still played. But within yeah. six months, he he was he, we could communicate. Now when, when well, I ain't seen him for years, but last time I see him, he's chatting to him. He sounds like me. Like yeah. there's no difference. But now it's like. You're all put into little boxes. You're not all the same. You are well, all I different. Think, I think, I I think an element of, of a lot of things that that you see these days is a lot of middle class people lecturing working class people <laughs> yeah, mate. On, on how life is and how we should act and whatnot. And it's like, okay, it's, even when it comes down to things like climate change recycle, a lot of working class people and working class and immigrant families, we were recycling without even giving it a name. 
Like, yeah, bro. We'd reuse stuff. We'd we try and get the most out of stuff. Like, do you know what I mean? You wouldn't. We, we, you see it on Twitter every now and again where like somebody's like squeezing a bit of toothpaste down or whatever like it's <laughs> yeah. like only bro I still cut that stuff in half that's what I'm <laughs> saying so, like, with a brush. but that's what I'm saying like that sort of stuff was, was just the norm in working class families and whatever you just you just you just made the most of your resources and you, yeah. and you reuse stuff and you didn't buy something because you couldn't afford it so you you try and fix it and, yeah 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 of and do all of that stuff to it um, and, a, and similarly with with um when it comes to conversations surrounding race, a lot of the time, I feel like you you do get a liberal, um, middle class attitude towards it. Where like, yeah, yeah, it's great, let's all mix or whatever. But it's it's all done in theory and it's not done in practical. Whereas on working yeah. class in working class communities, you'd see everybody sort of meshed together, mm. and then nobody had an issue with it. But I it's, it's even even when I when I when I sort of see certain things, for example, with uh, with gentrification. And you see a lot of the businesses, like, like let's say, for example, in, in Brixton, where you've got Brixton Market, and you've got a lot of these butchers and, and, and fishmongers and stuff, and they're like, yeah, the new clientele just won't come around here. And, it, and it's like this sort of intimidation. I don't know yeah. whether, they're, well, yeah, whether they're intimidated or whether they're, they just, there's something like subconsciously where they don't like, because they've never communicated with black or brown people and that's that kind yeah, of thing and too. especially people that are from they say that working class background they yeah. might have known a black guy at their boarding school but but, yeah, he, yeah. but, he, but he's from their world still yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah. it is different it yeah is different. yeah so so they weren't so but that's the thing they won't venture into Brixton market into those shops somewhere because they i don't know it's something that's alien to them or whatever whereas like you when we when, when i when i when we lived in Brixton you you'd see like your friends like mum and dad going into the market to buy everything they needed as well but Nowadays, they're all going to the Tesco, or they want to go to like the, you know, there's a, if there's a little supermarket that's owned by like it sells all the ethnic foods, but it's got like this nice name around it. And <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? It's it's not just yeah. it hasn't got a bunch of yams in front of it and, yeah, and a guy yeah, yeah, with scales yeah. there. I remember when I was growing up, we didn't we didn't like we weren't scared of what no, was going no, on no, 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 because that. we knew it, the, the only people that would get really. You know, like the stabbings and the shootings going on were amongst gang members to other gang members. Yeah, yeah, and stuff. no, I, like, I get so that. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a thing. I mean, of, of course, people there would be there, there was an element of like you wouldn't want to go certain places at night just because you know you're you're going to get robbed or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's just like anywhere else. I feel like I, I don't feel. I don't think anybody really feels comfortable anywhere in the world when it's night time. No, I get, <laughs> I get that, brother. I think that's, you know, me and my brothers always speak about this, that it was never, an, East London was never an intimidating place for us. Yeah. We moved to Essex sort of in my sort of mid-teens. Okay. And this was like where I missed East London because I went to Essex and it was a lot, it was, a, you could feel it instantly. It was a lot nicer. It was calmer, more relaxed. It was, I remember being at school and it was, barely a fight happening where every day in my all boys school yeah, in East yeah. London there was a kick off there was an argument there's a problem and what frustrated me about the gentrification of East London is all my pals in Essex went a couple of them came back to East London with me a few times and they were just they basically said Ugh, like that oh I feel like I'm gonna get stabbed oh I feel like this I feel like that it's horrible it's dirty and then like 10 years later they're all moving there and telling me how wonderful it is and that annoyed me yeah I yeah, was yeah. like I don't and that's my point it's like yeah. I, I preferred it when you just thought it was a place to get stabbed. I hate the fact that you talk about it as your East London now, just because it's got a Starbucks and because Westfield's there. It pissed me off. It was like, <laughs> no, I want, I want, I'm happy that it's become a nicer place. But there's this part. But of not me at the detriment to the people that grew yeah, up there. Yeah, you get yeah. where I'm coming from. It's yeah, like, but it, that's, 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 it never that's was. A, yeah, it never yeah. was a place where you just got stabbed. It was full of good working class salt of the earth people that all got on. And now it's like people look at it as it's a fashion statement to go. Oh, guess I live in Hackney now. It's like. Yeah, I know you do, mate, but you wouldn't have come here 10 years ago. Don't act like it's some big... You haven't climbed, climbed Mount Everest. It's yeah, not a big yeah, fucking yeah, achievement. Yeah, of course, yeah. You've just moved to an area that has been had loads of money pumped into it. Um, and you say, it's, it's, the elements of those areas now have become very middle class, in my view. Yeah. And I, I can't... I mean, having said that, I have just moved down to like the heart of the countryside <laughs> in Surrey. You can't get more middle class than where, no, I, no, than, no, than course, where I live course, now. But that was more to do with the fact that couldn't afford to buy a big enough house that I needed in the East End because yeah. that's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I don't think anybody can afford a house these days, really. No, oh, mate. The, the three bedroom terrace that I lived, that I rented for years. A guy I know that owned, like, I was chatting to the landlord, he sold it like a year ago for like 
890 grand. He bought it in the 90s for 48,000. <laughs> like, Jesus it's Christ. mad. Like, yeah. who's buying that now? Like, you'll be rich. Um, there is, I mean, I don't know, you can't buy a rat infested flat or bed sit in London for 200k. Nah, it's a madness. It's, it's an absolute madness. It really is yeah. um, what, what it's done. And there's good parts to it, and but then there are, poor, there are sad bits to it. The actual born and bred Londoners, and when I say that, I'm talking about all and sundry, all people that have lived here and moved here their whole lives. People yeah. like yourself, people like me, it's harder unless, you know, yeah, we can all work hard and we might make it, but I feel for those people that, some people aren't ever gonna earn more than 30, 40 grand a year, not for the lack of trying, but just the way the world is. Yeah, yeah, And it's like, they do yeah. get forced out, and then they get forced out into areas of Essex and Kent and, the, 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 I mean, Croydon, the, the, yeah, and the coastal God. towns. Yeah, it's, imagine it's, that living in Croydon. No. <laughs> Croydon's yeah, it's a weird one. It's uh, I didn't really go Croydon much of my whole life, and now I live because where I live, like yeah, yeah. My, like my missus and all her friends, it's uh, it's um, it's, it's, it's their little hangout. I'm like, right, oh, see. But that's the weird thing as well. Like if I went out in Hackney back in the day, I was fine. But if I went out in Brixton or went Croydon or somewhere, I felt like intimidated, even though. Really and truly, it wasn't. The places were pretty similar. It was just it was a different postcode, different people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you well, that's, that, yeah that postcode wars and stuff. That's yeah, it was also like I don't know what roads I, I should and shouldn't walk down where, yeah, where yeah, I yeah, lived. Yeah, I yeah. knew I knew where to go, what to yeah, do, yeah, and how yeah. to behave of and to avoid trouble. You go somewhere new and you're like, I don't know the rules here. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, only yeah. three miles from where I live, but it's, of uh, course, yeah, it's a different yeah. world, bro. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a different world, man. But um, of course. So footballing wise, oh my gosh, you're a United fan, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah, me too. Painful at the moment. For right? my fucking sins, bro. My gosh, man. Like, I don't. You know when people say, "Ah, oh, are you Ollie in, Ollie out?" Listen, man. <laughs> I, I ain't neither. I, I can't even. I'm it. just like. When people say, "Listen, it's not all Ollie's fault, right?" But but it's all been well documented regarding the, the Glazers and Woodward and how that's been detrimental to the club, and I do think that's where the main problems lie. Yeah. However. Bro, what the <laughs> fuck is this team, bro? You've got, you've got Rashford running around like a headless chicken. You've got McTominay and Fred and Matic in a Man United midfield. Oh my word! I, I, and when people say it's 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 not the manager, the manager should be able to get the best out of each player, bro. I said it on Twitter the other day, and I know Alex Ferguson. The comparison with Alex Ferguson isn't fair, but he had John O'Shea, Nutmeg, and Luis Figo, bro. <laughs> Yeah. John O'Shea was nutmegging Luis Figo no, in Champions right. League matches. He was chipping the keeper at Highbury. That's John O'Shea, bruv. And then you had Phil Neville looking like Gattuso in midfield in the big games. He was he was breaking up play and 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 he was getting stuck in Darren Fletcher. Players like this, like that, that as soon as Fergie left, of course they were in like playing for Everton. Yeah. And, or when they went and, elsewhere, well, they didn't yeah, yeah. do anything. Yeah. Really. West Bromwich Albion. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not like. They were, they were world beaters and went to like Inter Milan or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I felt like, I feel like that's a mark of a great manager when he can get the best out of each, every player. And well, I mean, also I don't seem to see. I, I think he's just deviated from the whole style of play that that he came into the job in the first place. So when it, when, we, when he first started and we went on that massive win streak, he was playing four three three attacking football. Everybody was looking forward, and then. Again, this has been well documented, but when he when he when he got the job permanently, it sort of started looking like Mourinho. Yeah, yeah, it was passing sideways, and everybody's bored again. And and I, and and I, and it was like when when you saw. I mean, I fucking hate Liverpool, uh, the team. I, I like the people, but I, I like Scousers and I like the city, but I hate Liverpool. Yeah, the that's team. fair. Yeah. That's fair. But um, yeah, like when you saw Klopp first take over, everybody was like, "Ah, oh, Liverpool." You, you just have to score they just have to score more goals than they concede right because yeah because you could see how Klopp wanted to play he wanted mm -hmm. to play just attacking and and he and he was playing the formation that he wanted three people up to, three three men up top and then as soon as they got Virgil van Dijk then you were like ah oh, that's the last piece of the puzzle fixed yeah. because they sorted out the defense and but you could see from the moment he started playing he started um there was an identity yeah to how exactly. he wanted to play football exactly and, and he and I think he clipped it in places, and I feel like from last season they weren't as 
you know, to coin their phrase, the heavy metal, heavy metal football kind of, but it, it dropped down to more indie rock, but it was still attacking. They were still, yeah. you know, they reserved a bit more energy to manage games better, but that's fine. It's okay to adapt your style and philosophy, but I just feel but with you, there's Ollie, still there's still the DNA there. There's yeah, still exactly. the DNA there. I, I feel very right now, every, yeah, like right now, everything's just like passion, play for the shirt, what we put we stitched in the 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 date of the treble to try and make these guys play better doesn't fucking work <laughs> took them took them to uh, to the old, to the um to the old training ground yeah it's not going to help um it's like the cliff i think it's called yeah yeah, yeah the like cliff that. it's just like come on bro like it's just they, they, i mean i get it right, right you're trying to instill passion i thinky but they, i don't think the players respect him I just don't think they respect him. I think yeah. a lot of the time when you're looking around in that dressing room, you got to look at the best players in that team right now are people that had like, like Twan Zebe had a season in a championship. Daniel James had a season in a championship. Pereira's just useless. <laughs> Someone tweeted today, Pereira is just one of these YouTube freestyle footballers that managed to get a contract to Man United. And that's how... Do you know what it is? His name helps him. On, yeah, if his name was Andrew Perry... <laughs> or whatever Andrew Perry Andrew Perry's not getting in the Man United side bro no nah, true it's because it's, it's he's got a nice fade sick name everyone's like yeah man he might have a bit of sauce but then you've got Fred there as well oh my gosh yeah, I mean, we Fred, paid 52 <laughs> mil for Fred Fred, you know? Fred should change use his actual born Brazilian name not his English <laughs> abbreviation because he's well, playing like Fred Fred, <laughs> Fred you know nah he needs to go away yeah, he's I don't awful. know man there's, there, there needs to be a radical overhaul in that team there needs to be a change of management there needs to be a change of structure in the whole football club yeah. but when people say oh, Oli Oli this Oli that I think, I think Oli would have been a gr- what should have happened was they shouldn't have never given him the job he should have he should have just stuck as caretaker and in the summer they should have looked at appointing somebody else and get a director of football did you yourself get carried away with the, with the, with the run and the PSG I was like yeah. Ollie Ollie's at the wheel I was like look they brought back Mickey Freeland and, and Carrick it's, it's definitely I mean it's definitely a group effort what they're doing there mate it's just <laughs> it's never been seen before I mean of course I mean this is what you need you need the Man United DNA I got caught up bruv I got like a dickhead I got duped bruv bro. but this, I've been saying this for a few days now and I stand by it we, as fans we're allowed to do that we don't yeah we become... but, I'm, but I'm also he was playing better football do you know, so, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying like, he was he was Martial was banging in goals and you had Pogba playing a fucking blinder as much as people love to hate on him no, it, when he's not in our team you see what fucking happens oh. there's no creativity in that midfield and people say he's giving a ball away but a lot of the time he's giving a ball away because he's trying to do something with it well, that, <laughs> yeah creative players are allowed to give the ball away it, it's it see this is the, i like stats but when people take stats out of context it's ridiculous like creative players get dispossessed more than non-creative players their pass completion rate is normally 70 percent or lower if they're taking risky passes yeah yeah. It's a, no, I, look, I agree with a lot of what you're saying i think with ollie I wanted it to work. I still want it to, like, I still want to wake want up to tomorrow work. and for it to work because I love the geezer. And we did all get carried away. But I still, see where Listen, I... Listen, he'll always be a legend, man. He'll and that's, always what, be that's, a legend, that's where I think. I think the players right now, I think they respect him as the man he is. He's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah. But when he's given them ideas, I just think everyone, everyone looks lost. And even himself, in his last press conference, Van Persie picked this up. He went, I don't really understand what Ole's saying in his post-match interviews he went he just looks lost for words and is that because he's just out of his depth and he doesn't know yeah what to, and I've been in that in position in jobs before I took a promotion once and I weren't ready for it and I swear every day can you use Excel yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah bro man can use Excel you know what <laughs> I feel you, like get, that. you sit down in the office and they've given you a spreadsheet light on and my, you, light you, on don't, you don't have yeah. a fucking clue what an if function is and yeah just... <laughs> yeah because I can use Excel I can read Excel but yeah actually been able to use Excel and, yeah. and, and actually or Microsoft Access <laughs> what the fuck is Microsoft Access yeah bro Ollie, Ollie has been just told to use Microsoft Access right now and he doesn't have a clue that's what's going on yeah he's, he's like, struggling to turn the fucking computer on yeah. and I feel bad for him so he's I... making flyers on paint instead of Photoshop <laughs> that's what's happening yeah he, he, and he got away with it for the first six months and everyone was like oh that's cool man like you know, flyer's yeah, yeah. decent and then like slowly slowly you it's, realize, retro, it's retro at the yeah, yeah, it's yeah, retro I love it and yeah. now it's like bro this is janky yeah, I don't like this anymore yeah it's like what's going on you're seeing Pep, Pep just drew a nice flyer on, on Illustrator and one of these programs and he's just there stuck it, doing it on his phone but yeah yeah man it's like, it's like you doing a special and coming out with knock knock jokes do you know what I mean that's it but it's I feel bad for him because I love I love the geezer someone said this to me they called my show the other day we did like a live phone in show on the channel 
and he said that he feels that 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 burst of brilliance we got from Oli was more to do with the fact that he did lift the mood amongst the players. He made them feel 10 yeah. foot tall. But it was Jose Mourinho and his coaching staff's training and, and style actually coming to fruition because the players were in a good mood. But as soon as Oli's methods and training came to fruition three or four months in, it all just died and fell away. And, and I'm sort of like, that may not be 100% accurate, but I, I, I think the guy's kind of along the, along the right lines. I don't, I don't even know, bro, because Mourinho didn't really play attacking football. It's always just sort of part of the bus. No, but I think it's an element of, you're still training in terms of what you're yeah. doing with the ball work and now you're being told to, to be free. And there's something, because the only reason I think there's an element of truth there is Oli can't, if Oli's instructing the players to not be as open, to not be as creative, to not attack in the same way, then okay, it's a clear mistake and you can still, okay, you can give him the congratulations for that three month run. But that's actually more annoying than him just never being good enough to be Manchester United manager. But at the end of the day... But who is good enough? Mate, th- th- this is the thing. I, I'm done with... Yeah, I'm a YouTuber. I've got a big channel. We speak a lot of football. But I'm a, fo- I'm a football fan. I never call myself a pundit. I ain't a journalist. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm at a stage where I've decided it ain't my job to realise this because I thought Jose was going to be a success. And I'd, and I think Jose would have been a success if they'd have given him the job straight after Sir Alex. Yes, I believe uh, he, he, he had a better squad to a, a base He'd have been a with, better, yeah. better squad and the, the squad had just come off of winning the the Premier League and also Jose at that point. He, I mean, the reason a lot of people lost respect for him is what happened at Chelsea after that when, when they were basically on relegation form. Yeah, they, they did. And I think that yeah. Jose himself, I think Real Madrid messed him up. In psychologically I think he'd become yeah. a very bitter and paranoid man which is why I think he'll come back into football but I think taking two or three years out is what he needs he needs that rest ah, but I just think I think if he'd have gone straight into the United job no, then I, I agree I, I agree, think, I agree. I think we'd have I think I think the players would have respected him as well as opposed to Moyes. yeah I get that and, and it was still a winning Man United team at that point yeah so, and, 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 think, and he had a winning mentality so they would have been giving them their all for him as well I think at the time bringing in David Moyes um, and and also, like, David Gill leaving at the same time as well. Yeah, the it perfect just... storm for, for failure. And the, 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 every time I think of David Moyes, the one thing that's... The first thing that comes into my head is I can just... I, I wish there was a camera recording it. I want to see the looks on Vidic and Rio's faces the day that he brings them into a private room and sits them down and puts a DVD on of Jack Yelka and says, this is how you become a better defender. And all these things, we can laugh at it, we can cry at it, we can scream at it. And I get your point that... That like managers have to take responsibility for how bad their teams are playing. Players have to take responsibility for, for what they're doing. But the fundamental problem at Man United, the deepest lying issue, is that the decision making and the judgment calls by Woodward, the board, and the owners since yeah. Fergie is gone. That's what's led to this point. Now, Oli, yes, he is responsible for how bad we're playing. And I keep people keep saying to me, Terry, but the board didn't pick the team against Newcastle or the tactics. I'm not. They didn't. But they allowed someone like Oli to be in charge. And Every, yeah, I mean, every I'm day a... they keep him here now. If he isn't good enough, let's just say you're completely right. He isn't good enough. That means every day he stays here, you know, we run the risk of falling further and oh, further into a relegation. I think the Liver, I think the Liverpool match is going to be going to be the one. I think if if they thump us up six nil or something, we're oh. we're we're out of it. It's it's yeah. I can't. I, I mean, I I still think there could be an announcement during this international break. I still think there could be. But yeah, if we get thumped, what kind of announcement though? What's going to be the announcement? Well, they keep coming. There's been two or three sort of stories released by by journalists that have good connections at the club that they're backing him, and I feel it's almost that. I don't know what the the phrase for it is. I'm not that intelligent, but I think it's along the line. I feel it's like because they're publicly backing him. I almost feel like that's the they're going to do him. (laughs) They're going to do him. It's a bit. It's almost like a publicly they're saying, "Oh yeah, we're we're fully behind Ollie. We're going to back him no matter what." I just feel that they're searching, they're looking, they're going to they're gonna get rid of him. And because they run it so badly and manage it so badly, I just don't trust them. The fact that they're coming out and publicly backing him, it just stinks to me that, I saw, I saw, me that they're going to sack him. I saw a tweet somewhere saying that um, sources close to the club have said, we're just trying to get to January. And I was like, that is, we are speaking like a relegation. Well, the so, thing is, uh, Oli, Oli, Oli shouldn't be, if you run it right, have you read the, or, or seen the interview that Dan... Ashworth gave who's no. the technical director at Brighton breaks it down so articulately but in layman's terms so we can understand and he speaks about how his job he got 
Brighton took him in from the FA. He did the same job as technical director of the FA. And his job is to orchestrate, and of course he's got football knowledge and he's got a commercial background too. Yeah. But his job is to orchestrate the philosophy and playing style that Brighton want to have, the recruitment of players, the scouting, and then also the, 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 the cohesion between the men's, the women's, and yeah. then the under 23s, 18s and academy, and the loan system, to make sure that it's all cohesive and working in the same direction, i.e. We don't loan a player out from the reserves to a club who don't play a similar style and have a similar philosophy to us. The academy players are trained in a way that as they move through the ranks and the age groups, by the time they get ready for the first team, it's not a change in philosophy. We do it with the women's team as well because we want to have a club identity and then we only recruit managers and players and staff that we know through our own level of due diligence and investigation into their background can play the way we need them to. And he said the problem you have with a lot of modern day clubs and the ones that are failing is every 14 months or so that they're taking in new managers but they bring somebody in and they change everything about the club based on the new manager's philosophy. Oh yeah, that's 100% correct. And that's the issue United have got. If Oli goes, which it shouldn't matter about now, January. If Oli goes, whatever the plan of action they've put in place, because I think you can see what they've tried to do with the signings and the direction they're going in. Whatever that plan is, they don't need to share that with us. That's something that's for private consumption only. But whatever that plan is, if you sack Oli tonight, the guy that you bring in to replace him, whether it's interim or permanently for now, it needs to be someone who is able to and willing to follow that same path. The biggest mistake, and I don't care about the name, is to get rid of Oli and then go, right, let's go Allegri. And then you give Allegri 18 months and then you go, right, let's, let's go to Shell. Oh, to Shell ain't worked. Right, let's go for Diego Simeone. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And that's, of course, that's, of course. that's for me, is my biggest fear of Oli going. It's not about him. It's just about us continually changing direction because I just don't trust these owners and I trust Woodward even less. Like The man is an amazing guy when it comes to commercial deals, but as from a, in terms of footballing decisions, it, it's like the blind leading the blind, mate. And it's just, yeah. it's, it's, and I say this honestly, Man United Football Club are in a relegation fight right now and I don't see the results as it currently stands getting any better. No, I, I mean we can lose our next three games. How much easy. has he won in since the PSG game? It's, it's five games in that's, twenty that's twenty-three or something like that, and so we haven't won go. in eleven away games. There you go. There you go. It's just uh, it's just it's not Man United, bro. It's not, and people say like, oh, no, no way we'll go down. Listen, man, like if you go back through the history of football, you know, Nottingham Forest won back-to-back European trophies. Nobody ever thought Champions League. Nobody ever thought they'd be where they are. Leeds were in a Champions League semi-final and challenged up near the top of the Premier League. A few years later, they dropped down. They never come back again. Yeah, and now yeah. United's got this huge fan base and they've got all this money. But look where we are now with all of that. Like, I never thought... You, if you imagine, right, if someone said to you, Fergie's retiring and over the next five, six years, we're going to spend £800 million on players and we're going to bring in two of the most decorated managers in the last 30 years to help lead the way... Nobody thought we'd, you know, you would never guess we'd be here now. It's just, I, 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 it's just beggar's belief, man. Like when you're, when you're just looking at some of the players that we used to have, like in midfield, and, and they were still putting in a shift, like Jemba Jemba. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's a crazy. <laughs> what I would give now for Jemba Jemba and Quinton Fortune. <laughs> yeah, Cleberson coming off the bench, bro. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cleberson. And fucking Anderson. Let's drop. Let's drop Rashford. Let's bring on uh, David Bellingham. Anderson at one point was doing for a season. At the season we won a Champions League, he was he was bossing a midfield. He was. I just got. See, I have an issue with any professional athlete at the level that like, men's football. Yeah, he's got fat. Arthur. Yeah, he's got a dad bod. Like just for me, there's no Arthur, excuse for yeah. it. Like people, you know, it's funny. You know, you said earlier about like people like sometimes things are a bit a bit too left wing. And I, I criticise Luke Shaw for being overweight. People are like you shouldn't body shame people I'm like a fat shame people I'm he's like, an athlete he's an athlete he's I'm, pro- I'm talking about he's professional if I turn up to work in an office and my shirt isn't is, is all creased up my tie is ripped and I stink of booze I should be criticised because yeah, I like, I'm not ready for work man's got if you've got man boobs and you're a pro footballer you ain't ready for work no of course of <laughs> course of course He's he was ridiculous but I mean going back to just the, the current state of the club when you when you're just looking at the, the next run of games we've got it doesn't. It doesn't look like anything's happening given the way we're playing, and I think Pogba's out for a little while as well. I saw him on Instagram with with his ankle in a cast. So, yeah. It, 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 who knows how long that's going to take for him to get better? And I don't. I think Rashford's confidence is shot to pieces. Yeah. I, he yeah, doesn't. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't look like. He looks like he's not going to be a better player than Danny Welbeck was. 
right now on his current form. If I mean, this just might be the best of Rashford. Yeah, he might, have, think, he might think, have hit a ceiling. Maybe the tacticians and the coaches have found him out in terms of how to stop him or, and nullify also, him. Also, also, I think he went through... He's played a ton of games at such a young age without um, a manager that sort of knows how to grow young talent. Mourinho's not really interested in young talent, so I don't think he gave a... He knew how to get the best out of him. Yeah. And you've got Oli now, who is unproven for, well, that, for, for yeah. want of a better and, word. And that's the one thing I would say in terms of we know how bad some of these players are or how they appear to be but I suppose in defence of them if we're going to be really balanced in, in the views is if Jose was as bad at the club as everyone said he was when he was here and especially developing talent and if Oli really is this manager out of his depth there is there is an area of some of these young players almost being lost in this in this era of Man United what, mediocrity what bro like if you look at people people always go oh yeah but it took Sir Alex about four years I'm sorry bro that was a different time also Sir Alex was Beating Bayern Munich and Real Madrid with Aberdeen. <laughs> yeah. With Aberdeen, yeah. bro. People, like, people forget about when the, the conversation comes about greatest ever manager, They people leave out what Fergie did at Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. They don't ever throw that into the... People don't realise what he did in, on the European, but Celtic, also domestically yeah, Celtic with and, and Rangers, the, the, the Scottish League, it's just Celtic and Rangers. And for somebody to come in and win it with Aberdeen, even, I don't think they've won it since. No, I don't believe they have. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Like it's a bit like with the when people bring up Skulls, Gerard and Lampard. They they start the debate from like ninety nine, maybe two thousand onwards when the other two were coming through. It's like, yeah. hang on, why aren't you talking about what what, what Skulls he was doing from the mid nineties? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You cut out the first five years of his career to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a bit like in the States when they talk about <laughs> when they talk about terrorism, people that are like pro terrorist laws it's like they count all the stats from September 11th onwards anybody that's anti-terrorism laws they, they count the stats afterwards so they, yeah, yeah, like you're yeah. manipulating the stats to suit your argument yeah, if that yeah, makes course, sense course, and, and yeah. I look at this this same thing with the, the Fergie thing but yeah it's you can't compare it like for me there's nothing about I hate saying it but I know it's the truth there's nothing I'm seeing on the field of play that gives me any encouragement that we're going to improve well, also, if, 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 if he if he hadn't scored for us in a in a Champions League final would we have taken him on, given his record at Mulder and um, at, at Cardiff? And, no. I, and I don't think because because there's no way in hell we take Harry Redknapp as our manager. There's no way in hell we take Steve Bruce or Sam Allardyce. So no, yeah, yeah you're right. And I think again, this, and this is what it comes down to it. Like fans are allowed to be nostalgic. Or Martin and, Hughes. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was listening to Mark Hughes. Sorry, Martin. Yeah, Mark Hughes wouldn't be good enough. And and he, and, and you would probably say that Big Sam and Mark, you, these are, they've all, they actually all have done more in football management than Ollie. Than Ollie has, yeah. But you, but you wouldn't take them, and it's right. And this, Would you take Poch now, though? Do you know what? Yeah, I, I think I I say yes because my ability to predict whether a manager is going to be good or bad for us, it shot to bits my credibility on it as a fan because I thought that LVG and Jose would be, would be very successful and they turned out to be absolutely well, I mean awful, they still won more than Arsenal they did yeah this, this is this is true <laughs> more, and, more and, than and more than what Poch did at Spurs I feel it's a real difficult one mate I think that, every, that loads of people will throw out reasons to bring in Poch and there'll be loads of reasons not to bring him in but what I want more than a manager a manager's sort of history and what he has and hasn't won is I, I want there to be more of a focus on you know what do we need? What are we? And this is what Woodward and the board need to know. What are we trying to achieve? What's our football? What, what do we want the football to look like? How do we want to develop players? What are we going to do in the transfer market? And then you need to find the right ma- man to 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 lead that. And yeah, that's a difficult thing for fans because everyone has a different opinion on how they want us to play. Like there are still a lot of United fans that don't care about the football being beautiful. They just want to win. So they'd be very happy with an Allegri or a Simeone because it's like I don't care what the football looks like I just want us getting back to winning ways but I look at it like that's great but I want us to play what I would consider to be traditional not, it doesn't have to be Fergie style but traditional Man United football is to be attacking and expansive and to, and to, yeah. and to be on the front foot wingers and so I want yeah and use wingers and wide men and, and be exciting now I want that so it's not about Simeone and Allegri being bad managers it's about, I don't think they're going to suit what I need. Poch f- ticks a lot of boxes, but then you have the argument, he ain't won nothing. But then, Jose and LVG had won things and they didn't work either. So, although they did win a few small trophies, that's the thing with the argument. It's a case of... You, you can Laurent sit, Blanc? Laurent Blanc could do it. Laurent Blanc would, would be a decent option. Uh, he, he, then you've got other up-and-coming managers. Yeah, he did. So he's got that. And I do, by the way, I think, 
Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe's an interesting one for me. Again, hasn't won anything, but what is achieved? People, I don't think people take into consideration what he's achieved at Bournemouth is every bit as good as what you're seeing Klopp doing at Liverpool right now. It, it's levels, yeah. yeah but yeah, Bournemouth, course. you know, by by name and size, they shouldn't even be in the Championship. Yeah, they should. And they're yeah, and they're yeah. a decent outfit in, in the, the Premier, Premier League. League. Yeah, it's crazy. And he, but he plays good football. He was that. He was one of those guys I told you about, by the way, in the, in the, from the private bank point of view. Only only wants to be seen on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> he used to bank with us. Um, well, he still does. I'm not there anymore. But um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's it, mate. The, the thing is, there's so many options. But it's about if you get where I'm coming from, people just getting the decisions right uh, straight away. And for me, if we if we picked Eddie Howe, if it was Poch, if it was Blanc, if it was Tuchel, if it was uh, is it Nangelsmann? I think so, so Leb, Leb, RB Leipzig right now. If it was any of those managers that play attacking football, I'd be I'd be happy to a stage where I'd be like, right, I'll get behind this guy. I think it's for me, it's in the right direction. Predicting whether or not we're going to become Premier League champions in, in three or four years, I don't know. I, I'm, that, is I'm, I'm it, is that. it a German guy that manages Norwich? You say yes, and we uh, we played good football. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, he played in the back. It was yeah. We played from the back. It's good. Timo he, he, obviously got football. got a th- got, a th- <laughs> got another goal. <laughs> his voice makes me laugh. Yeah, bro. It's, uh, it's yeah. He's he he's does all right as well. He does decent yeah, as well. Yeah, so, it, there, there are options out there, but it's just the but the point I'm making is you know what it's like with social media. And that's the world I, I work in. Yeah. Whoever we pick, and this is the problem I have with with social media fans is this: I've got opinions, but I'm still balanced in in and open to. Let's see what happens, and let's let's back the yeah. manager. What you're going to find is is that say they go for Eddie Howe, you're going to get a percentage that are going to be like, right, let's back him. He's, he's new, young, and fresh, but let's back him. Let's get behind him. Let's support him. And then you're going to get others from day one that are going to be like, he's never won anything. He's a serial. Not a serial loser, but he's never won anything. He's never been at this level. And yeah, they're going to yeah, keep yeah. pulling at that thread. And as soon as they get a bit of traction, because maybe you go for a bit of a, a bad run, yeah. they'll be on his back. And you just can't create unity. It doesn't matter who we pick. You're never going to create unity. Which well, that's is, that's which social is, media in general. Of course that's it is. why like, the people who work at the club can't be Exactly. And that's, why, like yeah, that, yeah. and that's why they have to stick to their plan. Because it doesn't matter really what I think and what you think from a decision-making point of view. They should be mm. making the right decisions for the club. And if they go for Eddie Howe and it doesn't work, you still stick to the plan and the direction you want to go in. You just change the man running it, as opposed to completely going in a new direction every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely that's, agree. That's, that's my biggest sort of issue with them. It's, 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 I mean, God knows what's going to happen in the next few weeks, uh, let alone months. But yeah, bro. yeah, I just hope we don't... I mean, part of me is like, if we go down, at least then it will make the Glazers go, fuck this. Yeah, there's elements of that. You can sometimes uh, the silver lining, I suppose, is it might. Yeah. But I don't, you know, you know, you just like you'd hope to think that, but but no, I mean, there's we, no we, way. We, I we might win a league title again yeah. if we go down. <laughs> Fucking hell! I uh, doubt it though. That that'd be the most painful bit. You, you'd think that it's never a bloody guarantee. The championship is is that's where you see real English football being played. Mm. It's it's hard. It's physical. It's that's why I suppose like people like Dan James and Twan Zebe are doing well because they had a whole full season in the Championship yeah well you've seen like Tammy as yeah. well come up at Tammy Chelsea Abraham, yeah. doing his thing I think that because the football's better at that level now because you get managers like the Norwich manager like mm-hmm. Eddie Howe playing good football but then it's like I've said it if Bielsa you, yeah exactly you've got Bielsa you've got like so you've got like decent football being played there and but you've still got that grit and that sort of yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can get, you see it when the League Cup but it's great happen. for it's great for young talent to, yes, to go massively. there and, and, and go on loan and and have a few. I think I think Rashford would have been benefited um, a lot better if he'd have just had a season on loan at one of those places. But yeah. we stuck him into the first team or whatever. But I think sometimes just getting into the habit of goal scoring for strikers, especially, is so important. Just that, just learning like, oh right, I could get a hat trick. Oh wow, I could do. Mm. Oh, whereas because some players need that not everybody's going to be Michael Owen and, and be banging in goals from 16 well the Michael Owens are, the Michael Owens are, the, are quite literally the exception, exception to the rule, to the yeah, rule. Yeah. but people always use you know the Wayne Rooney being brilliant at, at 17, 18 yeah, it's like, he's not, that's not normal yeah that's not yeah exactly that's <laughs> why they were so good yeah they're like one in a lifetime sort of players so you're not going to get people like like Rooney or, or Michael Owen at, at, you know, banging in goals at 16, 17, well, bossing a league. Exactly. Look how long it took Jamie Vardy to even get to this level. Like, yeah, man, yeah. Was, man was packing biscuits like or three he, years before he won the Premier League. Or even like you think about like Ian Wright. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he didn't start even playing until he was like, what, 22? Professional football? Yeah. Something like that. Like, 
it, it, it's, it's, and people will say it's a different game now or whatever, but I just think like he, he would have benefited a lot more if he'd have spent a season in the championship. No, I agree, craft, I agree. Just got into the, yeah, score one, two here, score a brace there, a hat trick here, learn how to, to, to finish, uh, see, see how, see how he deals with the responsibility at a lower level, and then, then get, get thrust into it at Manchester United, and then he'd be like, all right, cool. He's yeah. ready. He's had that no, season. I agree. I agree. Sticking it's... him up top now, at like you know, you're, you're, when we had him against PSG and whatnot, and you're just like, yeah, re- he's not Mbappe. <laughs> no, it's not. And and the thing is, I get it's a team sport, so you can be carried slightly by experience around you. But Man United's experience yeah, well, and spine isn't good enough to do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, we, it's not like we the old days where someone could look at like who they had in the team and next to them, like like when Rooney first came into the side. He's looking at like who else is in that team. It was Roy Keane? Do you know what I mean? You still had Van Nistelrooy there. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you look, yeah. just look at the strikers when Rooney signed. You had like obviously a young Ronaldo, but you had Rude, you had Oli still playing decent football. Uh, there was Alan Smith, and there was Louis Saha. Yeah. Like, Rashford. Rashford reminds me at the moment. It's a bit like some young up and coming heavyweight who's 19, 20, like being thrown in with a world champion. Like in his third or fourth fight, like it doesn't matter how good your talent is, you're, you're going to get sparked mm. because you ain't got the experience. And of course, and then the pressure comes on, and then the criticism comes on, and then the the attention you get because yeah, you're on a big contract. And I heard some guy tweeted today saying, oh, "We shouldn't be treating him as a 21 year old kid now. He wears a number 10, and he's got 200 grand a week. He's a fully that was another big, man. That was another big mistake. You shouldn't be giving him that number no, or whatever. No, it's it, not until he's he's proven himself it. to to be your number 10. I. I, I yeah, I, I don't agree with that sort of stuff. I, I know it's just symbolism, be. but like at the same time, it's like what they how how badly they devalued the number seven shirt, mm. which annoyed me for, for so many years. Gave it to Michael Owen, bro. Like, I know Owen was Owen was a decent player, but he's not even a number seven at least, anyway. I mean, listen, at least Owen scored a hat trick against Wolfsburg. Yeah, and he got the winner in the derby. Hard, hard pressed to see anyone in that team score a hat trick against uh, fucking I don't know Newcastle. Yeah, I, I read somewhere the other day that Man United haven't scored a hat trick. No player, Man, I think the last Man United player scored was a hat under trick. Fergie. Yeah, well, I, no, I think in the Premier League under Fergie, I think Van Persie got one in the Champions League at home against Olympiacos when Moyes was there, because I, I was there at that game. But in the Premier League, yeah, it's been all that time, and that just shows how bad the attacking football has been. The yeah, confidence we, is eroded. We can't. We can't. It's a madness. Can't hit a barn door for a, for madness, bruv. It's no. just. I mean, listen, I'm going to support Man United, but at the same time, it's just. I think now we just feel like what normal football fans have felt. I mean, of course, as well, what people don't realise is we we did get spoiled as Man United fans, man. Massively. We got... Massively. We, you were at the top of the game for about 20-plus years. And especially our, our age group yeah. and era, because, you know, we can't... We, From the 90s, 90s, 90s through to the 2000s, just winning everything, like, and everybody loved to hate you. That, yeah. So... so I mean, that's, I don't think that's ever going to happen again. I don't think. I think City, once Guardiola goes, we're already seeing City's demise. I mean, yeah, they're falling from the height. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I know they've got injuries and whatever, but being uh, what's it? Liverpool are eight points clear, and well, yeah, it's yeah. it's October. Well, the thing with the thing with that, right? Which I was I was listening to Simon Jordan on Talk Sport today. And he talks about how what he notices now is someone who used to obviously he has a great insight in football. He owned the damn club, so he sees what mm. goes on and he has those conversations with the real football minds. Football's changed in the last four or five years. The intensity that club teams have in terms of their play, how they train, and how they're managed is very different to that of the the nineties and two thousands. So when you hear City and Liverpool fans say, because our teams are accumulating ninety plus points, we're better than treble winning sides, double winning uh. sides. It's what they're taking out of consideration is the, the is the fundamental changes that have happened in football. The issue that you have when you manage like the the Klops, the Contes, the Peps, is it has a shelf life generally of four to five, maybe six years at a push. You burn you burn your teams out and you burn yourselves out. Klopp has said himself that it's very unlikely he'll renew his contract after 20, 2022 because he'll need a rest himself. And if he's going to need a rest, the player is actually running around on the field. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. need you need that, and it's not it's not a criticism. It's just how the sport's gone, and we never saw, on a consistent basis, teams win eight or nine of their opening ten games. It it didn't happen in the Premier League. Well, also I think it was a lot more competitive back then. People it, say people looked at like the points tally back in those days. 
literally every game was hard, man. You like there was no easy game. I mean, people say it still probably might say that, but there are there's still no easy games. But you genuinely could have got slapped up by. I, I, no, by I, I think side. I think there was a bit of that, and and also a, a different in mentality that you knew as a club just because of history and what had happened before. If we lose three of our opening ten games, we know we can still win the league. Yeah, We're yeah. now. If you like, draw a couple and lose one, that could be it because the other teams around you are just yeah. on point from day one, and that's why. For, but yeah, I also the, think though, like if the top teams didn't have that level of disposable income, and the lower leagues. I mean, that's why sometimes I like American sports for for their idea, like the team that came last. Uh, gets a draft, get, first draft pick. First draft pick, absolutely, because they try and redress the balance and. and and get all the teams sort of at a level playing field and then it does become about individual brilliance and, and coaching and yeah. that kind of thing rather than just are oh, we bought all the best players um, I think I think it did it did used to be a lot more competitive man you could go to teams like Villa and you'd be like oh shit I mean I know United we used, we used to shoot Villa Park like our training ground but it was yeah. <laughs> it was second probably home. our second favorite. Yeah, stadium. Yeah, um, yeah. You ask, yeah, you ask most of the the, 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 the Neville Rio era. They say, where's your favorite away ground? They all say Villa. Yeah, and they won there every time. Yeah, Villa was Villa was great. Even when we played like, because they used to host uh, semi finals of the FA Cup there as well, and we'd have great games there as well. But um, yeah, but you could go to certain certain places, and it was just it was unbelievable. When you're looking at the points tally, it used to be like 78, 80, that kind of thing to to win a league, and it was genuinely because. I remember at one season, like, relegation was, like, 40-odd points. <laughs> yeah. D- that's ludicrous. You wouldn't get that now, like, 40-something points or whatever for for a side and they're still getting relegated. No, 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 I get that, mate. Um, so, I think, I think yeah, I think if, if they were just a balance, because right now it's hard to see anybody get to City or Liverpool's level, but we'll see what happens when, when, when Guardiola leaves because yeah, it will. doesn't look... Like I mean, I, I I already think he's he's bored and he's had enough. Um, he'll probably go to Italy next or something. Yeah, have a year or so out and then yeah, go yeah. Then, then go to to Italy. Like try to get like a Milan or an Inter back because he's not going to go to Juve. Well, the one thing off of, left off of his CV, according to a lot of people, is is rejuvenating a team or taking a team that isn't at the peak. If Pep could go to an AC Milan and turn them into champions again. I think he he's already one of the greats but I think that you know that just elevates it would cement, him it would cement his reputation and because there the, wouldn't be a chink in his armour yeah anymore, because Jose has done that Fergie's done that if you look at the Aberdeen side of it, and yeah. he obviously rejuvenated Manchester United yeah. um, I think that Pep does get accused wrongfully in some respects but I get where they're coming from that well he goes to clubs that are at the peak of their powers with all the money and the, they're dominating the do- they're, all, they're almost at the top of that, that pyramid anyway and he just keeps them there which is difficult in itself but let's take a team that's fallen and rebuild them and see if you yeah, can do yeah, that but there yeah. we go but mate look I appreciate you coming on oh, um, thanks for having me man yeah quality it. let everyone know where they can find you on socials uh, K-A-E-K-U-R-D just f- K-Curd on everything there's a lot of brand synchronicity <laughs> as far as I'm concerned everything's just K-Curd so yeah check me out go and watch my special on YouTube Curd your enthusiasm um, yeah and stay safe that's it <laughs> stay safe we'll put the link uh, for that special in our description below on Thank all the, all the clips much. that we're putting out so yeah go check it out everyone else hit the like button hit the share button leave your comments below smash that like button you know <laughs> hit subscribe and comment below